I can hardly believe that I am sitting here at 8 in the morning and doing this. However, I don't really have time today, so I decided to record my final part of the bookish haul. Um, and this time it's about a lot of books, so stay tuned. First section, as you might have seen, are standalone titles, um, as far as I know of that they are standalones. And the first one we have here is a book I've been really anticipated um, to get into my collection. And everywhere where, where I was looking, it was sold out, out of stock. <laughs> like, I really rummaged through the entire internet um and one day somebody was selling it anyways here's <laughs> you've reached sam by dustin tau so you've reached sam is a story about julie clark who is someone who has everything together who has her future planned out and wants to move out of her small town with her boyfriend sam attend a college in the city and spent the summer in Japan but suddenly Sam dies and everything changes and Julie skips his funeral tries to actually forget him but a message Sam left behind in her yearbook forces her to just remember him and so desperate to actually hear him once again she calls his phone and one day he actually picks up the connection is just temporary and this is actually a story about learning how to deal with grief yes it's a really sad story i'm prepared my i've prepared myself for that whenever i'm going to read that so next on the standalone title list is P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern Ahern and I'm not really sure if I say her last name right. P.S. I Love You is I think one of the most it's it's sad but really romantic <laughs> in its own way. Holly and Gary plan to stay together forever. However, before this plan could be fulfilled, Gary died from a tumor in his brain and Holly is devastated and doesn't know how to continue living but that one day she found out that Gary was writing letters for her um, in his final days um, it is a little bit dear to my heart because my mom and I watched the movie so many times since I was a little child so I'm really curious what the book is like even though I usually don't like really romance that much but if there is something tragic in it count me in I guess <laughs> so I feel I might butcher her name however the next title is Lifeblood or in German Die Verborgene Geschichte by Caroline Lowland Lifeblood is a crime novel and it's about Joe who is a children author and lost her husband just recently to a tragic accident and she decided to move away to Shipcote with her youngest son and both move into the cottage which belongs to her grandma but something doesn't really seem great with this cottage as there was yeah somebody died in this house and it has something to do with the novel her grandma has written but there is no copy left and Joe wants to find all wants to find the manuscript and she somehow stumbled and somehow Joe found herself in the middle of a crime scene this is also a book which I found on my way outside to the university and I was just like huh it spoke to me to some sort I don't know so I picked it up and yeah now it's part of a collection 
Last but not least, on the standalone title list is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Eleanor and Park is a story of two people who connect as a hero. And even though it is said to be a romance, it is more than just romance because you really indulge with the characters about the ups and downs of the relationship and actual hardships and how even though you might think you have things in common, there are also differences. There are also other titles on my TBR, but this one has been the longest on my TBR. The next part is unfinished series. As in, either they are still on the publishing side, or I just picked up one copy of that series. The first one is Carol Well by Stephanie Garber. To be honest, I was actually fighting my, with myself with the synopsis at first. Then I read a, an English description of uh, what the story is about, and I was like, okay, this, this, this might be for me. This, it might be good. And I heard there's a lot of drama in it and I was like, oh yes, a lot of tragedy. <laughs> so yeah, I picked it up. The next one is another title by Stephanie Garber, which is I think the spin-off of Caravelle, and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart. I actually do not want to talk too much about the synopsis, but I really just wanted to show you the copy because it is so stunning. Um, I really wanted to have the end of the fox. I don't know. Collecting foxes and wolves and any kind of a family of a canon or yeah, canine family is something I do like. Um, it is not a signed copy, but it is still really wonderful. This one actually intrigued me more than Caravel, which might be a little sad, but it's simply because I was really fascinated of the title since I have not heard of something like that before and you can expect me with broken hearts, I'll be there, I'll be squaring up and just be like, oh yes, this, this, this might be me because I really love my sad stories, my tragedies give me the sadness give me the tears and a little bit of bittersweetness so another book series i want to talk about is the traces trilogy that um, i've also bought and i already prepared it because i'm going to my parents this weekend um it's below which is my february read picture so i'll try to explain traces at least because i cannot talk about below yet because it's the second part i have not read it However, Traces is mostly about Aiden, who is rather introverted and has a small selection of friends and otherwise just, just prefers to stay alone. Um, just that other day she meets another guy who just really sticks out to her because he's really quiet, like snow, fresh fallen snow. and. He's also rather introverted and due to cu curiosity uh, she gets to know Cole, um, who is the second main protagonist. And from there on there is a beautiful friendship starting to develop. However, Cole <laughs> has a lot of secrets. and. Yeah, Eden is afraid that the secrets of him might could lead to danger and she tries her best to help him but she doesn't expect the outcome of that. It's unforeseeable and yeah, it's it's a beautiful adventure, I just want to say that. <laughs> You'll get soaked up and I promise you will be emotionally invested. There's a reason why I say traces. At least the first part is a soul piece of mine. It's simply, if you've seen it, where are so many tabs in here? Just for codes, scenes, which I loved. Um, the color coding is pretty simple. Blue is from my first time reading. 
pink and orange for my second time now. Also my oldest um, Kobe, so yeah, it, it already has some damage here. <laughs> Simply because it traveled a lot with me. I also have a signed Kobe in my um, shelf from Sophie, which I am not reading because it's too precious. <laughs> I am looking forward to below, and my bookmark is also falling out, which is my February read, as I said before, and how it's going on with um, Cole and Aiden. Last but not least is for this section of Incompleted Series. Um, it's Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lynn. To keep things a little shorter, Six Crimson Cranes is basically about a princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. And it will take more than magic to find where they home. As I really wanted to say, it gives me mythological vibes and I'm really down for that. Completed series. We start with a duology and then work ourselves further through. The first one are Six of Crows, but I got the collector's edition because they are stunning and I was really, I was not sure to buy them because I already had, used to have, the paperbacks in a pen box and I was like, why would you buy a special edition if you already have a copy of that in a different format and in the end I actually purchased those two from my bookshop and like my favorite bookshop and I sold the paperbacks because I don't have enough shelf space but also just look at them they are so stunning and they have those are the first time I have sp I think it's sprayed sprayed edges so the next on the list is the first trilogy um, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. It's the second time I will encounter her writing style and so far I really loved it in The, Ad the Invisible Life of Ada LaRue. So I'm really curious on the story as well. So next on the list is a Shiver Trilogy by Maggie Stiefvater and it will be the first time I'll encounter her writing st style. Grace has always been really fascinated with wolves despite a few incidents which happened in her town and that one day she meets a wolf with yellow eyes who just stays or it which stays on her mind and on a different day she actually meets a boy with yellow eyes and she cannot stop but find those similarities to the wolf she has seen. Very intriguing. Also has fantasy aspects and I was like, okay, looking forward to it. So, hello, hello. Welcome to the last section, which kind of still fits to the previous one, but I really wanted to make it its own thing, simply because it's one theme actually. And it's the Cassandra Clare Shadowhunters section. The first of the Shadowhunter series of this part I want to show is the Infernal Divisor. This is the fan box. And on this box you have all the covers of the books shown as well. But I really wanted to have the ones from Walker Books, at least the paper covers. Um, the paperbacks because very fit to the ones of the Mortar Instruments which I'm going to show in a second. And as I've mentioned, um, I hope I can pick them up all in one, all in one. I'm not sure if I can, but I, I'll try. It is oof, the Mortar Instruments, also by Cassandra Clare, and this is why I wanted the bag of the others as well because they fit to this one. So this is basically everything I have for this haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. 
I'm now really surrounded by books and I have to clean it up. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching and staying with me through this little bit of a mess actually. And I hope you have a great day, a good evening or a good afternoon depending on what time it is for you. If you woke me up just now, good morning. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoy your reading sessions and I'll probably see you soon somewhere else writing poetry as usual. <laughs> Anyways, bye bye!